So I don't mind if you interrupt me here because um, what I'd like to talk about is a little abstract, but it goes to the heart of what we're doing. So I, uh, you know, it's a topic that I've mentioned over and, all, uh, over and over again, and it's in chapter three of Taiji Tran Through the Western Gate. So a, uh, it's like, it's at the core of, uh, of what, we're, what we're talking about. You know, Yang Cheng Pu said it is the most important principle in, in Tai Chi. The, uh, and that is differ the differentiation between substantial and insubstantial. So we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about that and so that whenever we do some activities that you can interject that into the activity because you know, his uncle, uh, I think it was young Ben Hao, uh, uh, he, uh, he said that if you, if you practice your, your Kung Fu without, without being able to differentiate insubstantial and substantial, you've wasted your time. So they're, they're pretty emphatic about it, those young, young guys. They uh, pretty emphatic about it. They're like, yeah, this is, this is, this is the, the, the real key here. And um, it's what takes us away, makes the jump from Taiji Tran as a physical exercise to an internal one, the one that is able to bridge the gap between heaven and earth, between heaven and uh, uh, yeah between heaven and earth so you're the this and the idea is that let's start with the just identifying what what they mean if we're talking about substantiality we're talking about something that has more substance that is more stuff so whatever stuff whatever stuff something is made of you pack more of it together you have more density more fixity more uh, appearance, then you have more stuff, and it becomes more substantial. If you go the opposite direction and you have less density, less fixity, then we have insubstantiality. And the two are not, it's not an either or, it's a one of those mutually arising things that uh, the Taoist folks really like so much. And it is always and forever, each point has its own substantial and insubstantial. So just like yin and yang, it's everything is includes substantial and insubstantial. And what which one appears? The one you focus on. And there, there's a, a constant interaction, which is a relationship between the two which is largely determined by how you look at it, which, what, which part you're looking at. So you can look at the same thing and see the, uh, you can look at my arm and say, oh, there's that arm there, and we see the stuff there. But you can also look at it as primarily space, because it's at the subatomic level, it is, 99.999% space, even though it appears at the at the uh, level we're working at as something which has a lot of a lot of stuff with it. Okay, so if you uh, you know if you're looking at an atom and you put a uh, you put the nucleus at the 50 yard line, then the first electron is going to be somewhere in the end zone. That's that's how much space is in in an individual atom. So it's there's mostly non-stuff going on. So we focus on the stuff and that means that whenever we do that, we get locked into just seeing the substantial as the important part of the equation. But it is the non-stuff, the insubstantial that drives it, that actually provides the power. So if we look at, uh, at something you know, the, say my arm again, if I move it across like this, the substantiality is the stuff, but the energy that drives it is more insubstantial. That is, there's less fixity, there's less density there, so, but it is what makes the arm move. 
And the same thing is true in, 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 in throughout the, the Tai Chi form. This distinction I'm making is, you know, at, at the fundamental level, it tells you which foot you put your weight on. You know, at the, you know, that's that's usually the as far as, as the teaching goes, if they say, I'll just standing up here. So I'm standing like this, and I put my my have all my weight in my right leg, that is the substantial leg. It is the one that has got my attention. It's got, it's doing the work for me. This is, my left leg is the insubstantial leg. So, and then uh, the distinction we, we wanna make is between, and, and there's a confusion a lot between yin and yang and substantial and insubstantial. And they're two different ideas. Yin and yang means, yang means that stuff is expanding. Yin means that stuff is contracting. Yang goes up and out, yin comes down and in. That's at, at, at its crudest level, that's what it's talking. We're still, when we're talking about yin and yang, we're both talking, we're always talking just about the substantiality, the stuff. When we talk about the non-stuff, then it's, it's different. And I guess you can talk about we can, when we're even we're, we're, when we're addressing yin and yang, we're always talking about the part that we can note, the part we can see, the part we can experience, the part that, that we can focus on. And this came up um, when I was uh, doing my next blog on on the elbow jin, which is uh, you know it, it talks about in that the in the in the classic uh, song of uh, the eight gates that they say how the, the substantial and the insubstantial must be clearly distinct, uh, discriminated, and in order for the the, the true power to uh, to uh, to come out, and the uh, where it's really important here is like the elbow is 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 stuff, right? My elbow is is definitely some there's stuff there. It's substantial, but what makes the elbow Chin is not elbow as a as something I, I throw as a punch, but it is actually a gate toward opening to this insubstantiality that amplifies our effective power dramatically. So if we um, uh, I'll get Maria to help out here at uh, when we give me a hand here. So. So, if uh, we have this very lovely arm here, and we're going to bring it over here, and it has a certain amount of stuff. There's a there's a solidity, a density, a fixity to this, and I push in on it, and it it moves because I'm pushing in with more force and more stuff than she is mustering at this point. However, if she feels her elbow, then I push in and it's not going anywhere. Just by feeling her elbow, she has created more power, more effective power, more chin, which is insubstantial, or it's a blend of substantial and insubstantial, just by getting more the just by focusing on the elbow. If we, we bring the arms in like this, I push in and it collapses really easily. But she just, just brings the elbows out just a little bit to the side there so she can feel them. And I bring it in and the power is dramatically increased. It creates a continuity throughout the whole system that is really uh, quite surprising. And uh, not only that, but if she feels her elbows and I push straight back, She's so rooted that I can't, I can't budge her. What has changed is the insubstantial. So uh, thank you. Good. What changed there was the insubstantial, the that the non-stuff that she brought her attention to. 
it takes some adjustment to move your attention from stuff to to non-stuff and then to then also do a little dance so that you can move your attention back and forth between the two any questions so far any thoughts any uh we'll give me a gallery screen see if there's anybody uh anybody uh, have any uh, thoughts on that is this all like the stuff we've covered and uh is uh really solid valerie um okay i'm always slow when when we get into these kinds of areas okay uh, <clears throat> so I know that, okay, I can, I can feel my arm, right? I'm feeling the outside. I'm just feeling it. Um, I'm aware of it. But if I want to really feel my elbow, I go inside. All right. Okay. Yes. So I'm not looking at it, but I know it's there because I can feel it because I'm on the inside of it. Right. That's the insubstantiality. Yes. Okay. That, so that is your the feeling. What's a feeling? You know, it's it's nerve impulses. It's a uh, you know your mind making a story out of it. Your your mind mapping your proprioception so that it says, oh, this is where my body is in space, and things like that. So it's it's all happening at a very uh, abstract level to get that get that sense of the elbow so there is but that is what makes the power is that is that feeling that that sense of doing it so you know you can you, you can start you know we the exercise we did a couple of weeks ago was you can start by having an external source there to, you feel with your elbow first, and you get that, and that and just be able to differentiate that feeling from the stuff of the elbow, and also the the action of the doing. It's real easy to get into this thing. What do I do next? That is where our first, that is the place, first place we go with this stuff. If we, oh, where, where is the? Uh, uh why don't you give me gallery i uh oh you that's right you need to to do it as a uh go ahead no 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 it's okay it's a, um um so we 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 our nervous system is developed by focusing on the stuff we we get names for things because we we can see something and say oh that's a dog that's a cat that's a chair and we get we get really used to identifying the stuff of the world and getting names for all the stuff and then as we get more mature we start to think more abstractly then other qualities enter into it love peace um loyalty you know emotions come in and different things different qualities enter in as we as we get our nervous system developed to a point where we can talk about not just the stuff but the relationship of stuff to other stuff and then we get into energy which is relationship of stuff to other stuff so the if you can feel into that your elbows so we start by just feeling it from the outside as we're pushing against it and then you change it to just actually just bring your elbows out a little bit and feel into that. The it you begin to create new neural connections, new awarenesses, which then allow you to fill up your your body mind with insubstantiality, simultaneous with the uh, with the substantiality. So then again, we're we're back to every point has its own substantial and insubstantial, and which one which one am I going to focus on? And that you can flip that switch back and forth rather often. So any any questions on this? Anybody? No. 
Okay, we're good. Okay, good. All right, so let's. Uh, oh, Beatrice. Oh, Beatrice. No, I just saw Stan. Stan looked like he was trying to talk and then he disappeared. Say again. Stan was talking while muted and then he disappeared, just giving you a heads up. That <laughs> okay. so, he looked like he was asking a question, but then somehow lost the text. Oh, okay. Just the call. Rick. So in terms of the the body in the the way the leg that has more weight is called the substantial, right? Right. And the leg. In that case, um, in order to have the same amount of rootedness, I found sometimes my insubstantial leg is a little less unrooted, less rooted. Sorry, is by bringing attention to the insubstantial, like to the ball of the foot, to root it. Am I making sense? Uh, yes. Yeah. So. Uh... I think if, if everybody just kind of stands up and we just just kind of do this, so you. Uh... Put your right foot forward. Have your uh, your weight fifty fifty. Then pick up your left heel and allow your weight to settle into the front foot. So that is now substantial. But as you, you feel into that, feel the, the weight of that, you feel the ball of your foot and directing your attention through the ball of your foot into the earth, you then create more root just by feeling. Then put your heel of your back foot down, pick up your front heel, and now your weight is in your left leg and that becomes the substantial leg. Okay, and then go back to your, your right foot, pick up your left heel. Good. So now the, the right leg is a substantial leg. But if you bring your left foot forward and reach out with that, this becomes the yang leg. That is, it's moving forward, it's, it's moving out. And even though the right leg is the substantial leg, the left leg is the yang leg. So it's a question, the, the question of which, which direction something is moving or is it expanding or contracting is what determines yin and yang versus the how much solidity or, or attention we're giving to something makes the, makes more the um, uh, substantial and insubstantial. So when you're, uh, oh, let's see, let's do it with the, with the hands too. So the, if you're reaching out with your right hand, that becomes the the substantial or the uh, that's the young hand, and it's also the substantial hand. That is, it's become it's the one that gets your attention right now. The left hand is, is insubstantial and it's yin, but we can have the uh, the uh, arm can be can be if it's coming in but moving it's now substantial but it's also yin if it's going out it's young and young and and substantial substantial and yin so then so it, it just i wouldn't make that distinction because it's something that people get uh, a little bit confused about sometimes so when we're uh, doing these warm-up exercises now, when we're doing recovering lost, lost territory exercises, I want you to focus on not just the doing this, but also on the substantial and insubstantial. So there's, you're practicing, that becomes part of who and what you are, because it is essential for what we're doing. And it actually goes much, much, much deeper than this. This is where, if we're talking about Tai Chi Chuan as a path of wisdom, as a path of spiritual development, it, that is an essential concept there, to be able to appreciate what, what's going on with that. And that's that's a, a, another talk another time. But let's, uh, let's do the, uh, the recovering, restore, uh, recovering lost territory exercises. So bring your uh, right foot uh, forward, pick up your left heel, and 
Feel the substantiality of your right leg. Feel the insubstantiality of your left leg. The more you can trust that right leg as being substantial, the, uh, the more root you're going to have and the more uh, stability, but it also creates a shift in your awareness. So you are saying, you have this immediate knowledge of what can I trust? Right now, what, can, what part of my body can I trust to get the job done? Which in this situation, it's not a particularly challenging thing, but if you're walking, running, say through a, through a forest and you have uh, stuff, you got things to trip on, rocks and roots and things like that, you need to be able to make an instantaneous shift between substantial and insubstantial. If you're playing push hand, you, you, you're going through that many times a second. So being able to differentiate it in a situation like this enables you to get some practice at it in a non-threatening uh, circumstance. And go back to your, your left foot, pick up your right heel, keep your right foot forward. And here again, we're using the claw, the claw of the weight-bearing leg or the substantial leg. So feel into the substance there. And notice that you're not putting weight on your right leg and feel into the insubstantiality of that leg. That doesn't mean it's, it's uh, not doing anything. It's doing a lot. It just doesn't happen to be supporting your body at this point. It is part of the circuit that you're generating just by making these, making these conscious adjustments. Good, now bring, put your left foot forward, pick up your right heel. Now, as you're doing this, you can also feel into your elbows just in a totally uh, non-challenging way. You're just feeling in the elbows and notice what that does when you do that. Notice how that changes your internal state just by doing that. So again, like so much of what we do when we practice this stuff is we learn these skills in non-threatening situations so that we have those that capacity to deal with it, uh, to use it whenever we, uh, whenever we are challenged. And shift to your back foot, your right foot, pick up your left heel. Hey, Rick, can you, can you, can you link the um, issue of substantiality and insubstantiality with feeling into your elbows and sensation? Like, I, I learned them separately, and I don't, I, they don't mesh in my brain yet or in my consciousness yet, those two models. Say, say that again. Um, you, you, you were just talking about feeling into your elbows as you were aware of substantiality and insubstantiality. Yes. And I never really learned a lot about the substantiality and insubstantiality, and I'm, try, I'm wondering how it links up with all the work we've been doing with, okay. with, well, here, with, with sensation. You have, the, you have the substantiality of your elbows. There, there's, there's the, the bones and the muscles and the tendons and uh, ligaments, but your attention to feel them is insubstantial. So by actually feeling that, you click a switch, which allows you to shift into this expanded state of integration of both insubstantial and substantial. You're able to use both at once. So um, we'll, we'll play with that as we do some of these other things as well. So here we go. So let's uh, do uh, uh, open the jade pillow game. Lift your chin, drop it, feel the 
face at the base of your skull, opening as you do that. And even when you're doing this, you're focusing on that, you can also simultaneously feel your elbows, feel the balls of your feet. So whenever you sh make that shift into a superconscious state, you're able to do a whole bunch of things at once, and you just have to be able to practice it enough to be able to get comfortable doing it. Good. So then reach out. Reach out with your, your fingers, reach with the top of your head, and lengthen that. So this can be done as a very crude stretching exercise, but you can also do it and feel into the energy, the insubstantiality of it as well. When you do that, you are creating more, much more benefit than if you're just doing it as a crude stretch. Do the other side. Yeah. And uh, roll your head. Yeah, if you just reach out a little bit with your elbows and feel though as you do that, it you start to then go the other way, and you'll start to realize you can do this in any situation. And it doesn't actually take more of your attention. It, it opens up your ability to have even more awareness. Uh, let's do um, a rooster head. Reach out with your face and then back like, like this. Good. All right. So. Stand up straight, reach with your, your knee one, your crown point, feel the balls of your feet. Unlock your knees, bend your knees a bit, and then release the vertebrae one at a time. Feel yourself rolling down. Use your breath to relax the muscles in your back. Let it go of any extraneous muscular tension. And then straighten your knees and continue to drop. Just let the weight of your body drop your uh, elongate everything. Don't force anything. And then bend your knees and sit down and then come up. Stack the vertebrae one on top of each other. Uh, hands come up. Open, arch your back, open the chest, open the shoulders. And here, even in this position, feel your elbows, reach with your fingers. Uh, Come down, round your back, and then arch your back, and round it. Good. And now I'm knocking on the door. So you set your elbow and you go back like that. And the other arm goes back like this. So you're, 
you do it both simultaneously and then you turn go the other side one two one two you're opening the shoulders you're opening the chest but again you're feeling those elbows as you're doing that and then just let them hang for a moment and let your arms relax shoulders relax let everything unwind Okay, big circles, inhale, arch your back. Exhale, round your back and squat down and then inhale, arch your back and exhale, squat and reach. Yeah, reverse it. Inhale, arch your back and exhale. Down. And relax. Let them hang. Even if you're letting your hang, just create a little structure. Just reach out a little bit with your elbows and just feel into your hands and just feel everything unwinding, releasing your shoulders, releasing that chronic tension in your shoulders, letting it drip off your fingers. Hands come up, reach out to the side, bring your shoulder blades together and back, and your elbows are dropped. Your your uh, wrists are, are relaxed and palms down you make the small circles yeah and then palms up and go the opposite direction Take every opportunity, feel your elbows, reach with your knee wand, your crown, the crown point of your head, feel the balls of your feet. Breathe. You can't do all these things with your thinking mind alone. You have to tap into that super conscious is going to do it. You get there by feeling what's going on and relax. Let them hang. Feel the chi. Feel it circulating throughout your body. Feel through your feet and into the ground. Feel through the top of your head and feel into the heavens. Okay, kidney 27. So uh, this acupuncture point right here on the uh, where your collarbone meets your sternum, right to the side of it, there's the fleshy part. And the feeling there, find a tender spot. And you can either poke it, I like to poke it, but you can also bump it with your fingers, whichever you, whichever you like. Breathe into the nose, out to the mouth. This gets the chi moving in the right direction. Good. Then come down your, your sternum to the second rib. Behind that is your thymus. Press in on that or you can thump it. This is good for your immune system. Go to your side of your rib cage, find a tender spot on both sides. This is for spleen chi. This is up to your, up to your metabolize. Spleen energy also helps get you centered. 
and it brings everything together. It's good for Earth G. Also helps it calm you down. Good. And then the underside of your cheekbones, the stomach too. And as you do that, feel into the balls of your feet as you press in on the cheekbones, on the stomach too. And feel the connection between your feet and those points. Good. And then lift with your uh, middle finger on your navel, lift with uh, and the other middle finger on your third eye. Good. And step in, deep breath, inhale, and press down and disappear the chi. Clear that out. Kind of priming the pump. Allow the nature chi to come through. Flushing out any stale or or uh, any kind of, as Pastor Young would say, an evil chi. Let it go. Good. Okay. You have a seat. Okay, so, so what uh, I've been focusing on is not giving you a whole lot of uh, whole lot of new stuff to do, which we'll do. We'll be doing that as well. But the uh, but I want to take you deeper into the stuff that we're already doing, the stuff that I know to be effective. I mean that that exercise I've been doing in one form or another now for about twenty five years. And it's really helpful for your spine, your shoulders, um, uh, yeah, back, every, you know, uh, opening and creating awareness for getting your head on straight. Because we don't actually get a manual that, you know, a lot of times we're, where we have the head kind of cockeyed because of, of the way we either traumas or just habit. That we uh, we uh, have been doing it a certain way for a long time. So just being able to create some space there, so that you can make new adjustments in the way that you are uh, moving and being. Yes, you have a question. There's I do have a question. What's that? In terms of substantial and insubstantial, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there are gradations of substantiality, right? Yes. Like matter is pretty substantial. Right. Okay. And is everybody hearing this? You can hear it, right? Yeah, I'll get it. good. Okay. Okay. So matter is densely substantial. Matter is densely substantial. And yes. then there's energy, physical energy, like um, the um, you know movement of a neuron, neural uh, electrical impulses in your body. That's energy. That's a little less substantial than the matter, right? And then the chi is actually less substantial than the physical energy. Right. And then the next level of insubstantiality would be awareness and intention. Uh, I'd say even like denser than that would be conscious thought. Like uh, the, the things, solid thoughts that you have. And then we get to awareness and, 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 and intention. Like, for example, when we do that kind of, you know, uh, demonstration of what happens when you change your, you know, feel into your elbow, there is no more matter in the arm than That's there right. was before. Right. But there we is something. Come up here and demonstrate this because people can't see you. So you can come up here and demonstrate that. So, oh, well. So, okay. so, you know, you're saying like what's different. Right. So, right. so what we have here is we have 
we have this we have we have the matter right we have the body right. we got bones and muscles and you and, have the muscular the impulses of the muscles to go like that right so that's a little less than the matter right but then we have the um the my energy system right so I, I, you know add the awareness of my energy system right and then to go even less substantial i add the feeling right and then i add an intention right right so yes. it's levels yes all right but if i have if i'm using chi but i'm not directing it then it's just going to stay there but if i use chi and intention and i direct it right then there's movement yes okay. that's exactly right but the uh uh so come back to the, the uh hope everybody got all that that so there are different gradations of substantiality and you get to pick the one that is appropriate for for where you are but let's say we let's say we we collapse the structure here so that she's got her hand on her chest and then we have uh -huh. a the 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 physicality is really doesn't really support much in the way of of being able to generate power from this place very easy for me to just kind of push and 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 make that happen but if maria then feels her elbow <clears throat> and reaches with her elbow and then it i find myself getting uprooted by that and this is where this is where we get into the woo woo place in in Tai Chi Chuan, but if she can isolate this so that I push in and it, it doesn't matter, I, I've already, I've lost my root. She's uprooted me just by the fact of bringing her awareness to her, to her elbow and created the elbow jin or Joe. So it, uh, so this is where, this is where we start to open the door to all the really cool stuff that masters do at uh, you know at the highest levels where where it seems like that's impossible because it kind of is <clears throat> and until you do it Beatrice, you want to say something um yeah so i'm still I, i'm still new at this insubstantial substantial um language so when when maria was not feeling into her elbow and you were pushing on her and she could collapse what was happening there vis-a-vis -vis substantiality and insubstantiality and then when she put her attention to her elbow and then reached what was happening in the language you just push it when she had this, this here and she was just a body and that was just there was no, okay. that, that was like 90 percent substantial 10 percent insubstantial okay right. so we change it and the same amount of substantiality, but the ratio changes by the fact that she is now directing conscious awareness to feeling the elbow and reaching with that. And suddenly the whole system starts to fill up with this woo woo stuff. And that's insubstantial. And, and then. then she it has the effect of of lifting me out of my root. And then she seemed to suggest that and yet another level of insubstantiality was when she had intention to that 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 to bring her awareness created this yes. this, this right. uprooting so intention reality and adding right. the direction right was another level. Right. So you uh it's one thing and then the, she made the point very very clearly that that's one thing where you have the chi you're filled up but it's not going anywhere so then you say oh i'd like to make this do something i'd like this to do some work here so then you direct the chi and it takes you in a certain direction now we have a chin we have directed energy physically expressed so then we're blending the substantial that of the physicality with the insubstantiality so when you're training Kung Fu, you're training your, your, your Tai Chi, your, 
getting more and more familiar with yourself as the insubstantiality of your being as your primary energy source. But yeah. you, were, you were teaching us about getting into the spirit part, which is even more insubstantial. Yes. So this is, uh, so in Tag um, the objective is to not get stuck at the energy level. So Cheng Man Ching said it there that if you if you are focused on the on the chi, you you're gonna fail. You 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 can't get stuck there. So yes, we cultivate energy up to a point so that we can use it, but if if you that is your goal, then you're not gonna get you're not gonna get to all the way home. To which case now we move into the next level, which is Shen, which is S H E N, which is spirit and that comes whenever we have this body mind integration that is directed uh, with intention and then it it is a new level of insubstantiality that is invisible to you if you're strictly at that at the at the phys at the physical level if you're just at the level of doing it uh, you're not going to get you're not going to get to to that part, and that is where that's where the really cool stuff starts to happen, and that's actually where Maria was whenever she was feeling her elbow. She was at the level of Shen. That makes sense. You good is that that up, Beatrice? Good, Dennis. Yeah, well, they talk about the intention leading the chi, which leads the blood, which leads the, the muscles. So that's really kind of the order it goes in, isn't it? Yeah, the E leads yeah. the chi, the chi leads the blood. And the E, which is your mind intent, or it's your, uh, um, it's your higher mind, your wisdom mind. Yeah. yeah. It's, still so, a, it's still a stage of insubstantiality below Shen. Right, okay, which, yeah. Which uh, Shen, incorporates the whole package it's, yeah it's, yeah you're in a state of wholeness and that so you establish your wholeness or your coherence as your first order of business and then you get to uh then you access there's different that. levels of that of substantial you I, I remember you wrote in your book you talked about i think you talked what like your brain is, is a substantial thing yes you know but a thought nobody ever seen a thought a thought is completely insubstantial that's right. You're right. You know, but there's all different levels of substantial thoughts. Yes. You know, a thought, can, a, you know, some thoughts can be much more substantial than another one, than others. You know, words, words, you know, a swear word is more, you, you know, you mentioned swear. A swear word is much more substantial than another. Right. So you can make, some thoughts can be much more substantial than others. That's, you know, a good example of it. So. It's excellently explained, Dennis. That's yeah. Good. So I mean, yeah. it's, it's how substantial is substantial. It's it's, it's... Uh, and and that's going to vary moment by moment depending on your interaction with whatever it is you're interacting with. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's a, it's so it's a a constant seething kettle boiling over that you know just constantly there's there's this this activity that's occurring all the time and. We are somewhere in that process at, at, at any moment. But yeah. if you want to move to the position where you are directing the process, rather than say, you know, if you're in the kettle, you don't want to just be a boiled potato, you wanna you wanna be, you know, the the one who's doing the boiling, then you shift into a more of a state of wholeness. So if the boiled potato would be like someone who's stuck in their emotions. Yeah. They feel that their emotions are the are the really the only important thing in their life. And you know, I'm an angry person or I'm just sad or whatever. So there there's someone who identifies wholly with their emotions. They are in that part of the process. Now that we now brings it so like when you do them push hands, you you can get you can get to the point where you can perceive somebody's intention before they move. Yes. So, I mean, how do you get to that point where you 
you you you you you begin to be, to 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 understand that where you we, where you can get to a level where you can you can you can perceive somebody's somebody's intention. Yes, and you all are able to do that, and you do do, do that already if you slow down enough to be able to observe right, yeah. doing it. You you can pick up intentions before someone express them. You just yeah. notice you know you know their some slight change. That, yeah, sometimes that, you notice when somebody walks in a room or you somebody's looking at you in a car next to you. Yes. You know, or someone wrinkles their brow or, you know, looks out of the corner of their eye or something like that. You'll notice that change and you're able to pick up on the intention before they uh before they actually do anything. Before maybe they even know that they have an intention. Then yeah. you get the you know you get the reputation of being a mind reader or you know something else. But that what we're what we're looking at there is King Jin or listening energy. Your that sensitivity to the stuff that is beyond the limits of your five senses. You're expanding out. So those five senses are really to the crudest uh, part of the of your sensory apparatus. You. Uh, you're able to put things together into many dozens, at least, of sensory uh, of feelings that that are not directly related to those five senses. And that the more you can slow things down and bring your awareness to the feelings, the more you're able to access that. So you're saying, you know, how do we get to that point where you're able to do it? Well, you're you're there already. Now, just a matter of of where in what capacity do you want to develop those skills you know if you're a poker player that's a, a certain self certain level of sensitivity to uh, intention that is uh that is beyond my capacity in that in that arena but i'm pretty good in the push hands arena and so you it depends on what game you want to play and where do you want to put that, put your attention to develop those skills? Interesting. Anybody else, any other thoughts? Richard. Um, it seems like we're encouraging cultivation of insubstantiality. Now, knowing what I, have learned over these uh, few years is that that's probably not accurate because the poles of substantial and insubstantial are probably equal. Um, but it seems as though insubstantial means without stuff. So it seems as though what we're talking about is the more we can free ourselves of our connection to stuff, the more able we are to express our intentions uh, without physical power. Um, yes. it, just, it just seems like that's the direction we're headed, but I don't want to get off. Well, in the I, I, think, I think that that's right. And we're only heading that direction because we have spent many decades doing the other. We've been moving more and more substantial. Right. And more identified with the substantial. So we kind of lose that. Uh, we not even lose it. We were, and we're more more unaware of of the of the insubstantial. So, and the reason why we're doing it is to be able to access more of this uh, effortless power that is available to us through Tai Chi Tran, and also the many health benefits that come from shifting away from a muscle-driven, tension-driven lifestyle, and then to be able to perform things, you know, the expression way wu way comes to mind. And basically, it translates to do, not do. It seems like we're... What's that? It seems like we're trying to... Um, we keep learning that... Um, being coherent is not a physical thing. We keep learning that um, 
he who is the most sown wins. So it, seem, it just seems as though freeing ourselves from stuff or the connection to stuff. No, um, not really, because you're, you're incorporating. It, it's, um, We're in with it. I, I, I was just saying, Richard, it's not getting away from stuff because your stuff is still there. You know, and a stuff is a part of you. I mean, part of you is material. Part of you is stuff. You know, what Rick's talking about in body, mind, spirit integration is that the body stuff, it's still part of you. The energy is part of you. The intention, the spirit, it's all, you're a, you're a composite package, you know. So you're not leaving your stuff behind. Your stuff gets... Well, you're not leaving it behind, but you're taking it out of it being in front. Yeah. You're you're you're, you're shifting so that it is um, it gets less of your attention. And right. You're 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 able to change the ratio of stuff to non-stuff at will. So first, you have to familiarize yourself and get comfortable with the non-stuff. Or you can be able to make that jump back and forth. If you're really stuck in your stuff, then then your substantiality, then it's uh, very difficult to make the jump. Trust the jump. But for Maria to trust that, oh yeah, if I feel my elbow, I can I can uproot Rick with that with no problem. That requires a certain familiarity and a certain trust of that non-stuff to be able to. To make that happen because we've all been through the situation where you just struggle with more and more muscular contraction more and more tension and and see it just doesn't work so the uh, being able to, to make that jump enables us to to access more of the energy that animates the whole system Right. I, and I, I still have my sure shoe t-shirt. You what? You I still have my sure shoe t-shirt. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> mine, mine too. <laughs> That's good. Denny Mack. Dennis. Ah, yeah, I was just going to say to tie this up that what I'm getting from is you're using the feeling of your elbow as an entrance to the awareness of the insubstantial. And then you add intent for movement to purpose. Would that be accurate? That, that's really succinct. Uh, so yes, I that, think that, 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 that is accurate. So it's a, it's a gate that allows you to, to tie the whole system together and create a, uh, an even bigger uh, uh, effect from the other the other things that you're doing. If you get a chance, I don't know if you, how many of you read last week's uh, blog, uh, but uh, check that out because I, that was part one of my elbow series. And I go into, uh, I go into some, uh, some detail on, uh, and tie it into the classics and how, how it's kind of hidden there in the, in the writing and has been ignored for uh, forever. But um, it, I, I kind of feel like, uh, you know Nicholas Cage here uh, mm -hmm. digging up some uh, some uh, hidden manuscript under hiding behind, hiding behind a, a mirror, but uh, uh, it seems to be hidden there in plain sight. And I'm writing part two of that now. So get familiar with part one, and I'll uh, uh, then you can we can do part two also. Okay, anybody else before we close out? <laughs> Okay, is this uh, is this uh, the direction people want to go? Do you want to do this, or do you want to do more uh, more stuff? Do you want to do uh, more doing? So, so uh, Valerie, 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 where's Valerie? More of this, more of this until I understand it. <laughs> What'd you say? I said more of this until I really understand it. Okay. Cool. I get the idea. I mean, sort of, but then to bring in the the Shen level, and how that, then my mind just starts to kind of <laughs> go like that. Yeah, I, so I don't want to go like that. I want to be able to 
I, I want to be able to understand it. Beautiful. Well, I'm I, I, happy to do that. And and the more you can uh, uh, you can give me questions and things like that, the more I can can explain it. Beatrice. So this may, this may be bookmarked for next week, but I I I sort of understood what Dennis said was that the feeling feeling into your elbow and bringing consciousness to it is 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 the portal into insubstantiality, and then the moving the intention is is a, is ta it's doing them together is a combining of substantial and it's in substantial because now you're moving the substantial arm with the insubstantial intention is that did i understand that correctly i, I, I think uh, i think you're you're uh, on the right track there okay thank you Can I just say something? Uh, got then where does shen come in where because shen shen comes in that's the state of wholeness or or I'm, I'm calling the uh, super consciousness, the, uh, the, the integration that comes together that, that is, brings the whole package together and directs it in, in, the, uh, uh, in a meaningful way. So would that be the actual um, Maria moving you by just her intention and the insubstantiality of being in the elbow. Of course, there's matter, but is that like the whole ball of wax in that instance, what you're talking about? It's not the moving so much as it is the... Uh, the well, yeah, it doesn't have to be moving, but you move. You move because of her intention. Because, because what, what, once you come over here, so we can see this, so we, the... Uh, uh, wait, wait. I gotta put it on. Okay, so here we go. Who is this thing? What's that? Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, so the, uh, if Maria wants to push me, she's not gonna get very far if she, uh, if she tries to use her physicality. Okay, and we got got certain laws of physics there, which kind of get in the way. But if, <laughs> <laughs> you're bigger than me, all right. So for her to get to the level of Shen, she has to be able to, as long as she is able, is thinking about me and creating the subject-object duality in this situation. She is, <laughs> she's not going to get very far, yeah. right? So she has to be able to move into a state of wholeness and her intention has to be directed. So it's still, it's still not happening yet. So getting that state of wholeness, she, she needs to feel that elbow and then notice when she did that, there was a change, there was a, a shift in her eyes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's a woo, something woo, woo. And like, I'm it's gone super, already. Super visible, very visible. I, I'm gone already. And when she made that shift, that was Shen. Okay, that's, she made that shift and, and I'm gone. I'm uprooted. Okay, something woo woo happened there. Thank you. Can what? I just say something? Yes. If I am seeing him as matter, right? then I have a limited amount of being able to deal with that much matter, especially if he's using his muscles. But if I start seeing him as the being, that's where meeting comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So I get coherent, I feel him to my elbow, and then I meet him as a being. Not happening yet. <laughs> but if I don't see you as something immovable. Right. So that's that subject-object duality. Right. So for you, you got to forget all that stuff, and you have to feel and be able to shift. She has to shift her state of being, okay, into that state of wholeness with intention, directed intention, and that's where we get into the level of Shen. Beatrice. I just, I wanted to make it very fast. I'm very excited because that thing that happens in class where you can just see the person change. Yes. <laughs> It was visible on Zoom for the first time. Well, well, then, I'm really yeah. happy because that's because just witnessing it is like changes me. So that just how like like it was visible, totally visible, like through the screen, all the all, all the mediation. So I'm totally happy. It is something that we're all capable of doing all day. It's something we can we can shift, make that shift anytime we want. 
And what I'm trying to do is create a, a map, a very, you know, kind of easy map to, to make it more uh, accessible. Rick, you, uh, you, you had something you were trying to show there, but uh, I couldn't make it out. Rick Myers, I can't hear you. You're, no, you're he's muted. Here. What's that? He says, never mind. Never mind. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I, so uh, yes, Valerie. I appreciate the maps. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure everybody's still interested in this and in, in what we're talking about here. Nobody's getting nobody's getting lost in the uh, in, in, in all the abstractions because <laughs> it's really simple stuff. It uh, you know it it's it's unfamiliar, so that makes it seem odd. But it's uh, you know it's oh, wow. it's it's really simple in terms of of what we got to do. And uh, yeah, Scott. Um, I find that if I'm not coherent while you're explaining this, I just lose the thread. I can try make that out. I find that if I'm not coherent while you're explaining these this stuff, I can't keep the thread. I have to really have to be in that in the in a different state, or I can't understand what the hell you're saying. Uh, th thank you. That was a, that was a great point because that that is true. So uh, <laughs> that, uh, we, 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 we definitely need, need to do that. Yeah, Valerie. Well, and I also realized that, you know, over, these, over the years that we've actually been entering into that state of Shen, just, it's just not using that terminology. Right. So once you did that last mapping with Maria, it became, oh, okay, now it's not so foreign. Right. And I can put the terminology with it, with its past experience. It's like connecting the dots. Right. So thank I mean, you. You're welcome. When you read the literature, it sounds like there's something other, something very mysterious and, and foreign. But no, no, we've all been there. And what we're just trying to do with, with this is be able to direct it, be able to go there even whenever the shit hits the fan. We want to be able to say, oh, okay, I can handle this and be able to do it. Particularly important in the, uh, in the, the times we live in where there is a lot of poop hitting a lot of fans. Uh, Dennis. Yeah, it's, it's elusive to find too, because when you hit it, it, it it's, effortless, it's effortless, effortless power. It feels like you're doing nothing. Right. And you're not geared to feel nothing. Right. You know, you push away a ward off and it's, it's, it's effortless. It's like, what did I do? Right. You know, you, you're used to muscling, you're used to pushing. And when you do it right, it's, what did I do? You know? Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Sam, you had something? Yes, uh, Rick, uh, just to sort of, I don't know if it's to clarify or just, uh, uh, working a stupid question. You had us uh, feel the balls of our feet, the elbows while we were doing those exercises. Yes. Would you recommend uh, the same thing for the form? Every, everything. That's the, everything. Key this, that's the key to what I've been finding out about this elbow chin or Joe as, as one of these eight essential gates is this is the one that ties it all together. This is the one that, that you know, Pong, Lu, Ji, An, uh, Sai, and and Li. You know the uh, the uh, those those six energies are brought together and amplified. And and what they say in, the, in that in that um, that classic was that the applications are infinite. Yes. They're uh, they're they're unlimited. So we have, uh, yeah, it, it is a key. It is truly a, a gateway into something which is much more powerful. And it, like I say, it's hidden in plain sight. Okay, Kate, thank you, Ray. it's been great. Uh, thank you all for your enthusiasm, your questions, your participation, and uh, uh, same time next week. Great. Same time next week. Yeah, yeah. Next week. yeah. And if